The 10th round of the 2003 Champ Car season took place in the land of maple syrups and hockey rinks, Canada. We're in the Canadian sweep now, as this week the Champ Car Series races in the streets of Toronto. The biggest storyline yet again was Paul Tracy. The hometown hero would take the pole position on the 10-year anniversary of his last win in his hometown. His main challenger this weekend seemed to be Bruno Giancara, but Tracy wasn't very phased, taunting Giancara with an invitation to look at his trophy cabinet. Well, you have to consider the source. Uh, his teammate has won three races and won three poles, and uh, Bruno says that he doesn't know anything about cars. So I'm uh, plenty happy to invite him over to look at my trophy case anytime and see how many trophies I've got to see if I crack. <laughs> Good point. Gotta love Tracy. Junkera was looking to prove something this weekend. He entered the season as a championship favorite, but despite being only eight points behind championship leader Tracy, he was still looking for that first win on the year. The battle between those two would be one to watch, as Junkera joined him on the front row. Dale Coyne Racing's Jeff Boss would be your 19th and last place starter. Speaking of coin, there was another shuffle there, as Alex Sparafica would take over the number 19 car from Walter Salas, who had previous obligations to attend to for the Toronto weekend. Speaking of drivers, one was returning in the form of Tiago Montero. After suffering a minor concussion in Cleveland, he was back in the car and ready to go. Heading into this race, I had a looming feeling of dread. Both a scented candle lit next to me, I realized that this series will give me at least a little bit more money to buy some more scented candles. With the Free race taken care of, we can get to the start of the race. The green flag came out with a bit of a jump, it was Paul Tracy throwing a punch early on and taking the lead. Meanwhile, farther behind, Alex Agliani had a great start, jumping into the podium places. But as Tracy pulled away, Carnage ensued behind with a big pileup in turn three. It all started with Darren Manning giving a love tap to Jimmy Vassar, who then ran into Adrian Fernandez. With the two cars stuck together blocking most of the track, the yellow had to come out. It was a disaster for the American team Speared Johansson team, as both Vassar and Ryan Hunter Ray would go a lap down. The CBS coverage just barely caught the restart on lap 3. I really shouldn't even bother mentioning these at this point. You know, if I had a dollar for every time I complained about the broadcast while making this series, I'd have a collection of least thongs in my closet and wouldn't be living in the city of Philadelphia. The field was clean this time around, for a few moments. Not very long after this, another incident took place. Once again in turn 3, but this time involving Alex Sparafico and Mario Haberfeld. Haberfeld went to the corner completely locked up and about 50 miles an hour quicker than anyone else, hitting Sparafico in the process, taking the two out of the race, and bringing out the second full course caution. Haberfeld and his team believed something broke on the car, but they never said what exactly broke. Let me point something out about this incident. They didn't show replay of the crash for about 10 minutes. The race had already been restarted by the time they showed a replay of it. Speaking of the restart and replays, CBS missed the ensuing restart while showing some replays of the start. These broadcasts are just so infuriatingly awful, the smell of scented candles are the only thing that keep me sane when watching them. You know, considering the racing action was practically non-existent in the first 20 laps, and practically non-existent for the whole race for that matter, I'll just talk about scented candles for the next few minutes. It's not like we're missing anything exciting, so let me set the calming music and drop the overly exciting voice. Welcome everybody to Candle Corner. The candle I'd lit for this race is a Black Cherry Mellow 3 wick candle from White Barn. I purchased this from a Bath & Body Works near Baltimore in early August of 2023. The label on it says it has hints of ripe cherry, Merlot, and red raspberry. As someone who has always enjoyed raspberry as both a scent and a flavor, I was attracted to this candle when I saw that. This race, which I watched on November 7th, was also the first time I had lit this candle, and I can say that it was an enjoyable and calming experience with an enjoyable and calming aroma. I also enjoy the purplish-pink color of the stained glass that the candle was in. 
zen. The scent was very naturey, if that's even a word. The candle smell also has a nice sweetness to it that was neither sickeningly overwhelming or unnoticeably faint. It feels like the sort of aroma you'd get from a freshly brewed fruity tea. It's an elegant blend of nature-based aromas. I would say that if everything I've described so far is exactly what you want in a candle, then the Black Cherry Merlot is right for you. Overall, it's a natural aroma which feels most fitting for the fall season, but could be used at any time of the year and still deliver a pleasurable experience. I would recommend this candle to you. And if you enjoyed even more, there's also Bath & Body Works branded hand sanitizers, hand lotions, and soaps with the same scent. This has been the very first edition of the Candle Corner. Now back to the racing action from the 2003 Molson Indy Toronto. I say action, I'd be more excited watching blue whale sex with my cock stuck in an anthill. Some action started popping up around lap 25, with Mario Dominguez backing his car into the turn 8 wall, nearly getting hit by Adrian Fernandez in the process. Dominguez was running in the top 10 at the time, but this incident would severely damage his race. An even harder kick in the shins came to Alex Tagliani and his team only a few laps later. He had broken a right rear toe link after getting hit by Bruno Giancara in turn 3, and was taken out of the race from 2nd. Then not very long after this, a pit stop came around with nothing changing up towards the front as Tracy exited the pit road with the lead. By lap 36, Tracy had began lapping cars running in the top 10, and was leading the race by over 17 seconds. The biggest point of action in this stage was Max Pappas having a catastrophic suspension failure going down Lakeshore Boulevard. He not only needed to retire from the race because of it, he also probably needed a change of pants after that. With nothing else of note going on at this stage, I figured I'd share a nice fun fact about this race. According to the broadcast, there's a camera crew at the track filming a pilot for a reality TV show named Life of the Champs, who for this episode were following Jimmy Vassar. To my knowledge, this show never saw the light of day. Tracy kept the lead after the second round of pit stops, and in all honesty, I was starting to doze off. But this race finally got a shot in the arm on lap 78, as an incident with Jimmy Vassar and Mario Dominguez left Vassar stalled on the outside of turn 3. The full course yellow came out for this, ending a 70 lap green flag streak. Tracy's lead was around 33 seconds at the time. Under the yellow, the final pit window opened. There was some weird contention around this, with Bruno Giancara somehow not catching up to Tracy before the the pit stops. Then Junkara's team was trying to tell the race officials to close the pits. It was strange more than anything else. Tracy was able to hold on to the lead through this, while Junkara dropped down the order, giving P2 to Michelle Jordan Jr. After an aborted first attempt at the restart, they'd get the race restarted on lap 85. Jordan needed to keep Tracy within striking distance. Guess what he didn't do? After just one lap, the gap was already north of a second. The gap spread more and more as the laps ticked down, and my boredom increased more and more too. Paul Tracy would lead every lap and take the checkered flag to score the victory in the 2003 Molson Indy Toronto, winning at the track 10 years after his last win there, and taking his fourth victory of the season. Michelle Jordan Jr. would finish about 5 seconds behind in second, while Bruno Giancara would come home in third. Tracy's win in this race, as far as I'm concerned, was his racing magnum opus, as he absolutely crushed the field. Holy Christ, that was a bad race. That, I think, is a new low from the season, beating at Laguna Seca and Long Beach. I can't really dread about completing the rest of this series, though. We're now officially halfway through it, so I guess that's something. Besides that, there's not a lot to talk about. Even the CBS broadcast realizes as there's no post-race show after they interviewed Tracy. If they have nothing else to say, neither do I. Next race is Vancouver, and I hope you can all join me in one week's time. Thank you all for watching, and have a great afternoon.